Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the Half Court Podcast. Um, so today we're with, again, as mentioned in our previous podcast, this one's going to be a little bit different, as we are only going to have one topic, um, and that we'll be talking about um, number 24, number 8, um, Kobe Bryant. Um, so as, again, mentioned, if you haven't seen our other podcast, um, make sure to go check that one out before this one. Um, because we do talk about um, just general basketball stuff that's been happening in the past couple weeks. Uh, but our previous podcast before that one was recorded, I think, the Friday night. And then, obviously, the unfortunate helicopter um, accident that happened Sunday morning um, we weren't able to talk about. Um, so this is our first time back in the studio. Um, so did you want to talk a little bit first, or would you like me to talk about kind of what Kobe meant and... Um, um stuff. Yeah, I can start. Um I definitely had an emotional whole entire week when it happened. Um they get they affected the whole world obviously. So the fact that he meant so much to so many people, I know that growing up as a Raptors fan, he destroyed us multiple times and it was just kind of the point where even though you're a different fan, you everybody loved Kobe. Like there was no person on this planet who didn't love Kobe Bryant. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there who <sighs> stupidly say he's a rapist after he died and like everything like that. And I think the fact that he did so much for so many people and affected so many people is just super crazy. And it was obviously saddening for me personally. And I think the fact that my birthday is 224 is kind of crazy. Yeah, so if we... Um, my reaction, um, it was, it was similar. Um, I remember when I first heard the news, I had been up till like a crazy hour in the morning, the Saturday before. Um, so I woke up the Sunday, I woke up at about 1130, 1145, um, to a call from my mom actually. Um, and so I pick up the phone and I was like, so my mom's like, Hey, like, did you hear the news? And I was like, I was like, what news? And she's like, like, like the news about Kobe. And like, I I just kind of started like I started like thinking I was like oh my god like what happened and she's like yeah like like there's TMZ reports that um, he was in a helicopter crash this morning that um, like killed him and I I I I, I didn't I didn't, it didn't even really process to me for like probably a solid half hour like I was just sitting there scrolling through Twitter and all these things were coming in I was like there's no way like this like because Kobe Kobe's one of those guys who always just seems so invincible. Yeah. Like, he's... It, it also turns out I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my Kobe jersey today. It just yeah. kind of happened to turn out that way. But he was he was the main reason why I got into basketball to begin with. Um, he was um, one of, if not my childhood hero. Um, and he still is. Um, he was... I know I would always, when I was... 12, 13 years old, I would wear like that um, wrist kind of arm, forearm band like he would, and I would I chew like chew my jersey like him. Like I just wanted to, I would I'd be in my driveway till 11, 12, 1 a.m. doing fadeaways and stuff, just trying to be like him, right? Like just like little things like that. Who, when you're a kid, you don't realize you're trying to be like that person. But now looking back, like I wanted to be like Kobe when I was. Like on the basketball court, I wanted to be Kobe. I wanted to have that Mamba mentality. I wanted, I wanted to do those things that he did, just because he was. Again, he just seemed so much larger than life. Um, and that was a lot of the reactions I saw on Twitter as in the aftermath of it happened, was not only regular people but celebrities as well being like, I never thought I would see news that Kobe died. I I can't remember which NBA player it was. I think it might have been. Um, D'Angelo Russell or Luka Doncic or one of the young guys who said I was waiting on a notification from his phone that some like basically saying um, I was waiting for the news to come out that somehow Kobe had grabbed everyone and jumped out of the plane or jumped out of the helicopter with a parachute and saved everyone's lives and he was completely fine and just because that, like, that's kind of how the guy is and I had kind of been the same I, th- I thought there was like there's no way he's gone like there's there's he was only he was only 42. He had so much life to live. He obviously had um, his four young kids. 
um, one of which was in the helicopter with him. Um, it's a, it's a, it's an unfortunate situation. It's, um, I had, a, it was a very, very emotional week, and I still even think about like I, I, I bought all like the commemorative magazines and stuff, and I was just flipping through them, looking at all the amazing photographs through his career. Um, it, it felt to me that it was, it, it almost felt like a death in the family, almost. Yeah. Because even though I had never met him, I had always l looked up to him and I wanted to, to be like him. And I had his posters and I had his jerseys and I like, I went to go see Laker games when I was a kid. And I was just like, I, I always loved him and it just, it felt like I knew him even though I didn't. Um, and I think again, like that was a lot of people's reactions. Um, and, I, and talking about what you said with his um, off court incidents, you can't really discount that because that is still part of his legacy, but the people who were kind of saying, oh, like, good riddance, like, like, those, like, because he's done this, he's like, he deserved this, like, people on Twitter are just stupid trolls, like, that stuff happens no matter what, and, um, obviously, like, those things weren't the best parts of him, but, um, I choose to remember the, the good parts of him, and, um, especially in the later part of his life, winning an Oscar, um, always being at his kids' games, um, reaching out to the next generation of NBA players. Um, I just think he had so much left to give the game and to the world, and it's it's really it's sad that it came to, the, to an end so short. Yeah, it was definitely... I remember when it happened, it was just... Like, everybody was telling me, like, Tyler and Justin and everybody was telling me and I was just like I don't believe it like I wouldn't believe that it happened until another source other than TMZ reported it like I remember I texted you and I was like I have no clue if this is true or not like I don't believe it yet yeah and like the fact that like it seemed like he was an invincible dude like you he said felt, he felt like, like I said he felt like a superhero yeah and the fact that he was only 42 he could have, if he wanted to, he could have still been in the league if he wanted to at 42. Like. And the, and the thing that, the thing that I think is the saddest part about it all, too, is the, is he seemed to be enjoying life after basketball so much. Yeah. He seemed to, the Mamba Academy um, with his daughter Gigi um, and then the rest of that team, he seemed to have so much fun with that and he seemed to love it every second and you look at interviews he did on late night TV shows talking about his daughters and talking about his wife and all that stuff it, it, it's heartbreaking to just like to now go back and watch those things because I can't imagine what the helicopter would have been like and, I, and the one conversation I was having with somebody um, was saying because um, obviously, it came out later that the conditions for helicopters weren't great that day. But I said to him, I said, he's been, because I, I don't know if everyone who's watching this knew, but he had fly, he's been flying helicopters to games and just around LA for for years. Like I think since like the mid two thousands. Like he's been doing it for a very very long time. And so even though conditions are bad, he he probably saw getting into a helicopter like how we see getting into a car. And so it's all, it would almost like to have somebody, you know, uh, like be like, okay, well, there's a blizzard outside, but I can, I'll can i drive home anyways. Like it doesn't really matter. Like I know the roads aren't going to be great, but I'll just take it slow, right? It's the same, probably the same sort of thing. And that, I, like I said, I can't, I can't imagine what what that would have been. Like I, I don't know, it's, it's heartbreaking, man. It's It's tough. Yeah, just the fact that, like, heck, I liked Kobe so much I named my dog after him. Like, yeah, <laughs> I had a dog named Kobe. I there's as much as my mom wants to say it wasn't named after Kobe. Like, I I named the dog after Kobe, and it's just the fact that so many kids looked up to Kobe, and so many kids played basketball because of Kobe, and. The fact that any single time somebody would throw something into a trash can, even if you don't watch basketball, you would say Kobe. And that's and that uh, that's a, what I was gonna kind of get to next is like you, 
in the immediate aftermath of it happened, and even still to this day, the amount of people, not even only in the sports world, but just the world in general who have expressed sympathy and sadness for Kobe dying, even if they have never watched a minute of basketball, just shows how big of an impact he had on so many people's lives. Um, I saw a tweet um, like two or three days after it happened of somebody who said, I just came home from school and my mom was crying and I asked why my mom was crying and she said she was crying because of Kobe and she had never watched a single game of basketball in her life and she was still crying about this man's passing and I think that that kind of shows the scope of of, of what he meant to people um, because not only the the mindset that he had yes obviously it's it was to an extent basketball related but that Mamba mentality that, he, that um, has been talked about so much I mean you can put that into anything in life like as long as if you work hard you put in the hours even when you don't want to you get up you work you if you feel, if you feel, if like if you, on days you don't feel like working, you gotta think, think, hey, you know what? Somebody else out there is working harder than me. I gotta get on. I gotta get on my, on their level. And you still continue to work. That's the mom mentality. And I think every single person can take something away from that, whether they're a sports fan or not, whether they knew, whether they cared about Kobe, basketball career, whether they, any of that stuff. Like that's something that is just a basic thing that people can can kind of take away. And I think that's a that's a um, valuable lesson that I think people um, kind of like to, can take away from from it. Yeah, it was it was super insane to see just going on Twitter and seeing the whole world like it really put basketball and him obviously like mostly him, but like kind of put basketball on on the map even more than it already was too. Like obviously it is about Kobe and like all that, but so many people gravitated to him as a basketball player. I think the fact that I'm sure so many fans of him growing up and so many people, like, once he retired, stopped watching basketball because of him and stuff like that. I think that the fact that he can still impact the world as much as he did four or five years after he retired is just absolutely unbelievable. And the, and the tributes and everything that came directly through the NBA. Yeah. Um, with the eight-second and 24-second violations. I That was... The first one that happened, I think it was the Raptors game. Raptors. That was one of the coolest moments I think I've ever seen. I started crying. I I had already I had kind of stopped crying at that point, but as soon as I refreshed my my social media and I saw that video, I burst into tears again because I thought, how perfect is it that the two numbers you wore are the 24 second violation and an eight second backcourt violation, the two numbers that he wore. And the first game the Lakers had back, they scored 81 81 points in the first half. And like you can't write that stuff. Like I don't. You can. You can. And I don't believe in divine above or anything like that. But you kind of when you when you see stuff like that and you think about everything that's happened in the past couple weeks. I saw like the sunset in L.A. The day, the night that it happened, the sky was lit up. Like the sunset was purple and gold. Like as much as I, tr- I, tr- I, I don't believe in that stuff too much. You kind of got to think there's something happening, <laughs> right? Like it's 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 weird coincidences like that after, after a tragedy that you. Yeah, not to mention like, somehow I think it was like Devin Booker and Trey Young, Young combined for 81 points, and, and they both took like 24 shots. They both or something took 24 like that. Like shots, and. I don't I don't know, man. Like that's. And then. The on the day of his memorial, which was yesterday, um, Bradley Beal had back-to-back fifty-point games for the first time since Kobe. since Kobe. And I think the fact did that you, did you watch any of the memorial? I saw highlights of it. Um, Vanessa me? Bryant's speech is one of the most amazing speeches I've ever seen because I don't I've never seen her speak publicly before. Yeah. And I cannot imagine what she's going through, like. I, the one thing that really, really hit home for me was when she was talking was she knew that, and this is um, a paraphrase from one of her quotes, she said, God couldn't take Kobe without taking Gigi, 
because they were so inseparable on earth that they needed to be together in another life. And like, that's so beautiful. Like I, yeah. in, in a twisted, messed up way, like that is the most beautiful thing. And I, I, I just, I feel for Vanessa, obviously I feel for Kobe's three other kids. I can't, I, like, I, I can't imagine what that must be. And I also, um, we haven't really addressed the other um, seven individuals who were, yeah. who were lost in the accident as well. My prayers are also out with all their families as well. Um, I know the one, I, 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 unfortunately I can't remember the last name, but it was, I believe, a father and then, oh, it was a mother, father, and then their daughter. And then they also had another kid. So somebody out there lost not only both their parents, but a sister. And I can't imagine that. Man. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> so I, my, my heart goes out to everyone who was affected. Um, it's, a, it's just a, you try and find light, you try and find the positives in the situation, but in a lot, in, in that sort of situation, there's, it's hard to find, but um, with people as amazing as um, Kobe, you, you, you try and remember the, the good memories more than, more than anything. And I think there'd be the, the amount of stories, like for example, I know I've been talking for a little bit longer, so I'll, I'll let you have the floor after this, but the one story that Shaq told during the um, memorial at the Staples Center yesterday talking about, um, he basically said the, the other guys in the Lakers were, like, they were upset that Kobe wasn't passing. So Shaq, um, Shaq went to go talk to Kobe, and I apologize for my language here because there is a swear word here, just to forewarn you. Um, he says, Kobe, the guys, aren't, the guys aren't happy you're not passing. There's no I in team. And Kobe says, I know there's no I in team, but there is an Emmy in that motherfucker. And that is such a Kobe Bryant quote, and I absolutely love that because that just shows the type of person he was. Is <laughs> and I, and I'm I'm glad there were, there was obviously a lot of the the uh, sadness in the building in Staples, but I'm glad guys like Shaq, guys, Shaq, guys like Shaq, guys like Michael Jordan were able to share those positive memories to make people feel better about the situation and um, just kind of remember him in a positive light. So yeah, there were so many current past future probably nba players and just people like celebrities were there for example christina aguilera obviously had that beautiful song she sang during it yeah. and just having all those people there supporting in that staple center is just unbelievable and i think i would have done i would have i would have paid any amount of money to be there dude like i would have i would have just loved to be there and not only just because, oh, so I just I would have just, I don't know, just to be just to be around as many people who love Kobe as much as I did. I did. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. Long live, long live twenty four. Um, I I know we me and my me and my buddy went to go play pickup at the uh, at the rec. Um, at the y YMCA a couple couple weeks ago when we, we played a game. We were originally going to play just a regular game to 21, and we said, no, we're going to play till 24. And we played to 24, and I don't know. It was, it was just, yeah, I, you try, I, I'm trying to remember him as much as, much as, I, as I possibly can. So. Yeah, and I think this is definitely going to be a podcast where we don't talk about anything else. It's definitely going to be... Oh, you know, this is we're only talking about Kobe on this one. Yeah, this so is only Kobe, and it's only a tribute, and I don't know if... I just want to... Yeah, I just, I, I just want to... And again, I, I, I feel bad that it's, we are rather late to the subject, but um, I did want to... I, I want to share kind of how, yeah. how he, he made me feel, how... Because if Kobe didn't play like we probably wouldn't be doing this right now no because kobe was the sole reason why i started to fall in love with the game of basketball and why i still love it to this day the passion that he put in the hard work the accolades everything so yeah i 100 percent agree with that like i think me and noah definitely wouldn't be sitting in these chairs right now talking about the nba and basketball in general without number 24 and number eight and all those other 
accolades he's played and just that fadeaway shot. Please make him the logo. Please, just for the love of God. They have to. Like, they have, they have to. And, I, and the um, kind of leaping back to what we were talking about in our previous podcast with the All-Star game, I loved the tributes that they gave to him mm-hmm. through the All-Star game, the 24, and especially that fourth quarter, the up to 24 points, and guys playing hard. Kobe would have loved for that, man. Like, Kobe Kobe was wa- Kobe was looking down at that All-Star game, and he was smiling, man, because that's exactly how he would want All-Star games to be played in his life. If because everyone knew it was in his honor, they all wanted to play hard. They wanted to have that mom mentality, and it, it shone through. And I also want to get a Kobe Bryant tattoo. I really I want to get the his Nike Mamba logo. I want to get it tattooed on my leg somewhere. Maybe that's, that's a matching thing we do. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah. So that's again. It's a it's a shorter one, but I just wanted to we just wanted to talk about um, what Kobe meant to us. Um, love you, Kobe. Yeah, I guess we should end this with two words: Mamba, Mamba forever. Mamba mentality, baby. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you for watching. Um, we'll hopefully be back soon. Um, I know this one's a little bit more somber and not as high energy as previous ones, but. Um, we felt like Kobe deserved that respect. So, yeah, thank you for. We definitely wanted to keep it more serious for this one, but I know it's we'll a short be, we'll 21 be, minutes, but tribute to Kobe. We'll be back soon. All right. Love y'all. Love Have y'all. Fun.